The following system that's up there is probably the easiest system of equations you would ever get. They tell you that the one equal, I guess the even easier equation would be x is, x is 3, y is 2. Those are your two equations. Can you solve? And you're like, uh, y is 2, x is 3? You're right. So this one's a little bit harder than that, but it does tell you that y is 2. So if y is 2, what does x have to be? Negative 1. So you can plug in, you could plug in 2 in for y and then solve for x and you get x is negative 1. So if you graph these two things, they both be lines, y equals 2 is a horizontal line and x plus 2y equals 3 is a regular line with a slope of 3 over 2. No, 1 over, two, negative 1 over 2, sorry. And if you graph that, they would intersect at the point negative 1, comma 2. Now we're going to add some new language here that we haven't talked about yet. We're going to add what's called an augmented matrix. With your system of equations, you can make an augmented matrix. What it has is it has the coefficients matrix numbers on the left and the answers matrix on the right put together with just a straight line in between them. So the straight line sort of tells you where the equal sign is, and this is saying 1x plus 2y is equal 3, 0x is plus 1y equals 2. And when you have something in this form, it's called row echelon form. If you get the bottom left-hand corner, in other words, everything below the diagonal, all zeros, that's called, wow, that's called row echelon form. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to learn matrix operations. And with our matrix operations, try to get it into that row echelon form. And that process is called Gaussian elimination. So what does that look like? Well, first of all, you take your system of equation and you make your augmented matrix. So you've got, I sort of got in brackets here, they'd also be like a line there separating things. You've got your coefficients matrix on one side and your answer matrix on the other. And then we use a system of, or a set of things called elementary row operations in order to get zeros in that, in that bottom diagonal. Now, your elementary row operations are basically all the things you did when you used your elimination technique for equations. You can interchange any two rows if you want, because it doesn't matter which equation was first and which equation was second. You can multiply a row by any non-zero number. Right? And we did that sometimes with our equation. We say, oh, we'll multiply equation 2, everything by 2, because that helped us eliminate something. And then you can add the multiple of one row to another and write that in instead. Then once you get your diagonal bottom, everything below your diagonal, all zeros, you're going to know what one of your variables are. Just like we knew here, y is equal to 2. And once you get y is equal to 2, you can go back to your equations, plug it into the one above it, and find out what x is. So here's our first equation. And if we write this as an augmented matrix, 1, negative 2, 10, 1, 4, 16. Our goal, our goal is to get this, everything under that line, under the diagonal, to be a zero. The way that we show our work, so we want to get this one to equal a zero. And the way that we show our work is, now I'm going to slide that over here, is in between, we draw an arrow, and we describe what we're changing and how we're changing it using our elementary row operations. So I want to change row 2. 
So my row 2, so I'll write row 2 is the one I'm going to change. And I'm going to change row 2 by taking row 1 minus row 2. So one of your elementary, we can multiply by multiples, or we can add or subtract different rows. What would happen if I did row 1 minus row 2? First of all, notice, what are we changing? Oh, notation here. I don't like what I did there. I'll keep all my notation the same. I like the little 2. So what am I going to do? I'm changing row 2. This is what I'm saying here. I'm changing row 2. So that means my row 1 isn't changing. I can rewrite it. Row 1's not changing. But I'm going to change row 2 to make it row 1 minus row 2. What happens when I do 1 minus 1? 0. So this becomes a 0. What happens when I do negative 2 minus 4? Negative 6. And when I do 10 minus 16? Negative 6. We have now changed this to reduce, oh, no, sorry, just to row echelon form, where we got a zero in that bottom corner. What does this mean? This means minus 6y is equals minus 6. Is that easy to solve for? Yes. y is equal to 1. And once you have y equals 1, you can go to your row 1 and say, well, x minus 2y's has to equal 10. What does that make my x? x is equal to 12. So our solution, if we write it as a point, is 1 comma 12. Why did I subtract them? Well, it's the same idea as your elimination does. So when you were doing this equation before, and your elimination technique said, how would I eliminate a variable? I could eliminate a variable if I subtracted. And if I subtracted, what would I get? I would get negative 6y equals negative 6. OK? And so that becomes a new equation. So you might say, well, why don't we keep our old technique? Well, for sure. Our old techniques work, but now this is a new technique with matrices. And our new technique might be more tedious in 2 by 2 situations, but might be more manageable once you get to bigger things, like systems of four equations and four unknowns, or three equations and three unknowns. OK? So what we, what we get, yeah, we do need to cancel it out. Yeah, if you minus them and you didn't get a 0 here, then it wouldn't be very helpful. So our goal is to try to get things to cancel out. So in, and as you've noticed, I mean, this one was very short, and you could do it. But you're going to find out with the other ones that I don't have a lot of space in these notes. So you might want to grab some scrap paper or take out some loose leaf when we're trying this. So let's do this one together, and then I will give you a chance to do the next two on your own. So we'll start by writing our augmented matrix. So again, we want the bottom corner to be equal to 0. If you want, you can rearrange your rows. That's fine. But how could I get row 2 to have a 0 in that bottom corner? Yes. OK. So 2 times row 1, and then? minus row 2. OK. And you are going to do 
hundreds of simple arithmetic operations in this section. Don't do them too fast because it's so easy to make a little mistake and it is a huge headache if you make any small arithmetic mistakes. You can spend like half an hour going, can't find my mistake. So be careful. So two times row one and then subtract row two. So if I do it with my first terms, two times four minus four. Well, first of all, row one's not changing. So I can rewrite that. But two times two minus this, that'll give me my zero. It's exactly what I wanted. Two times negative three is negative six minus one, negative seven. Two times a negative two, negative four, minus 24, negative 28. You see how you might have put a negative 20 there, but you're very tempted to, you know, mix up things a little bit with adding and subtracting. Anyways, now that we've got a zero here, we have row echelon form. We can say, I know that negative 7y is equal to negative 28. So y is equal to 4. And if y is equal to 4, I know from my first equation that 2x minus 3y's has to equal negative 2. That means 2x is equal to 10 and x is equal to 5. So our solution is 5 comma 4. And the other nice thing about this unit is once you get your solution, you can go back to your original equations and say, does it actually work? If I plug in 5 for x and 4 for y, do I get negative 2? And if I plug in 5 for x and 4 for y, do I get 24? Both of those equations have to be true for that to be a solution. If we check it here, 10 minus 12, that's negative 2. And 20 plus 4 is 24, so it does work. Okay, there's two for you to try. I'll put the answers up here so you can check. The blue ones is for the next one. Once you've got both of those, I want you to try this system of 3 by 3. And you want to get it to be three zeros down there. We are going to do this 3 by 3 one together. Here's our goal to get those zeros in that bottom corner. Wow. I'm going to copy. So our augmented matrix for this one is going to be 3, 2, negative 4, negative 20, 1, 1, 1, 4, 5, negative 1, 1, 18. And our goal is to get everything below the diagonal to be zeros. Now, a couple of things for doing this. One thing in the very first operation that I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2 and switch it with row 1. That's going to just put this 1, 1, 1, 4 here and 3, 2, negative 4, negative 20, 5, negative 1, 1, 18 there. Why not? It seems like a waste of time, but all that's doing is just sort of saying, well, I'm imagining this one was written first and that one was written second. But the thing that's really nice in doing this is that we get a 1 here. And having a 1 there is going to be super easy to work with getting our zeros. So I'm going to just I'm going to just make this small for a second. I'm going to write an augmented matrix, like this is what we want. We want those zeros there, right? So what we're going to do as a process 
And this is similar to the process that you did with elimination. With elimination, what you decided was you were going to cancel one of the variables first. Get rid of all the x's, get rid of all the y's, get rid of all the z's, and get two new equations. The way that we do that with rho echelon form is this column. We're going to make those zeros first because that is, in a sense, like getting rid of our x's and creating two new equations with just y and z and y and z. Now, by moving the 1 to that top corner, I can, I'm going to change row 2 and row 3 at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but in the same step, just so we can save a little bit of paper. Okay, I'm going to take row 2 and subtract three row 1s. And I'm going to take row 3 and subtract five row 1s. So my only row that's not changing here is my first row, 1, 1, 1, 4. But can you see how that 1 is really nice because it allows me to cancel or to do adding and subtracting rather easily. So my row 2 is going to be row 2 minus 3 row 1s. Well, that'll give me 0 here. 2 minus 3, that'll give me negative 1 there. Negative 4 minus 3 will be a negative 7 there. A negative 20 minus 12, negative 32 here. Row 3 is going to be row 3 minus 5 row 1s. 5 minus 5, 0. Negative 1 minus 10, negative 11. And 1 plus 20, 21. And 18. Whoa. Did I do anything wrong here? I feel like I just did something wrong. I did. Did you notice what I did? I used row 2. Oh. How easy is it to make a mistake in this arithmetic stuff? So easy. Okay, so this will be a 0. I was using row 2. Negative 1 minus 5. This should be negative 6. 1 minus 5, this will be negative 4. And 18 minus 20, negative 2. The next thing I'm going to do, and I don't need to do this, but it's leading us into a process of making things better. So you're, we got both of these zeros first. We're now going to try and get this 0 next. But we're going to find out that when these values are 1s, our life is a lot easier. So when I'm looking at row 2, would there be an easy way to get this to have a 1 there? Yes. I could take row 2 and make it equal to negative 1 times row 2. So basically, all I'm going to do is multiply row 2 by a negative 1. So row 1 doesn't change. Row 3, 0, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2 doesn't change. And I'm just multiplying row 2 by a negative 1. So that'll change all of those values to positive. As soon as there's a 1 there, can you see that I can now take row 3 and take row 3 and add 6 row 2's to get a 0 where I want that final 0. And because I have zeros in my first column in row 2 and row 3, okay, row 1 doesn't change. Row 2 doesn't change. And row 3 plus 6 row 2's, well, these are all zeros, so this stays a 0. But now, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Negative 4 plus 42. But if I add 6 row 1s, then I add this back in, and that gets rid of my initial 0. 
right? You are right that if I could have used row 1, I could have made that a 0, but then my first 0 goes away. So I have to use these two rows where the two zeros are to keep those zeros. Okay, so negative 4 plus 42 is 38. And negative 2, isn't this wonderful? We get some nice numbers every once in a while. Negative 2 plus 632, so that's 192, is 190. Is that right? All right. So from this, this is where we're a little bit nervous, okay? Everybody should be a little bit nervous because I said there should be nice numbers and these currently look a little scary. But if we divide 190 by 38, what do we get? Does it work out nice? Five, just five? Not five point anything scary? <sighs> five point zero. <laughs> so we get z is equal to five. And once we've got z is equal to five, we can work one equation at a time backwards. So a second equation says that y plus seven z's is equal to 32. This is 35 y is equal to negative 3. And once we've got both of those, we can go back to our first equation, x plus y plus z is equal to 4. x is equal to 2. So our solution as a point in three dimensions, 2, negative 3, 5. Here's a new one. Fifteen is from the original equation, minus fifteen. Okay. <laughs> So our goal, this first, then this. Part of those goals is having a 1 here and a 1 there. That makes your life easier. Not necessary, but easier. And then we get z is equal to 3 y is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to negative 1. These are generally non-calculator questions, even though in the end sometimes you get some large numbers to work with. Why? Oh, like in my very, f like when I wrote out my equation here? Right, because I need, I wanted to get this to be a 0, and this is a 1. So I, I either have to multiply this one by 3 to match them up, or this one by 1 third. Yeah, but why do you have to use 3 to match them up? Why don't you multiply it by 2 and make the 2 a 0? Oh, why don't I make these ones 0? No, like why don't you? Tomorrow, we're going to go from row echelon form to reduced row echelon form. With reduced row echelon form, yes, your diagonal is going to be all ones and everything else is going to be zeros. So if we look at the one that we just finished, if we look at the one that we've just finished, this would be row echelon form. We got our bottom numbers diagonals. Could you take this one and keep going and make all of these ones zeros? And make this a one as well. So that is your next 
thing to do until the bell rings. See if you can get all of those to be ones on the diagonal and everything else zeros.